All right. Well, the Quality Digest team, uh, as we've told you a couple times, was at the IMTS show a few weeks ago, and we had the chance, as usual, to see a lot of new test and measurement equipment. This week's Tech Corner is a visit we had at Nikon's booth to take a look at Nikon's new cross-scanner XC65DX. Take a look. And we're at the uh, Nikon booth here at IMTS 2014, where we're going to look at uh, kind of an interesting comparison between two different technologies uh, here uh, at the Nikon booth between two different CMMs. And here to tell us about it is uh, David Schloud. And David, what are, what are we looking at? I see a CMM here on the left with what, a, a touch probe? Yes, correct. And, and what's, what's on the right here? Oh, uh, this is our uh, cross scanner, the XC65DX laser scanner. And what, what's, what's, what are we actually demonstrating here? One side's faster than the other? Or? Correct. We have two parts over here on the laser scanner side and one part over here on the touch probe side. What we're showcasing is, is that the laser scanner is roughly two times faster, or if not even more, than the touch probe. So you've got a regular touch probe over here. It's going through. It's doing what a touch probe does, which is relatively Correct. slow, right? Correct. Okay. Taking but, discrete points one by one, whereas the laser scanner, we're taking a lot more points. Okay. The same amount and of and time. from what from what I understand, uh, the accuracy is is fairly similar between between these two machines. So you're getting all this throughput. It's, it's much faster, but. Uh, non-contact and, and same, same accuracy. I mean, yes, correct. So, with one of the inherent uh, problems with touch probing is uh, probe error. So, with the laser scanner, we're able to uh, account for that and not have those errors. Okay. So, tell me a little bit about the laser scanner. This looks a little bit different. It's got what three different lasers on it? Correct. So, this laser scanner is specially designed for sheet metal parts. Um, so, with the three different laser scanners, we're able to get into the size of the features to be able to ob obtain feature position, feature location, feature size, along with scanning the contours of the surface. Okay, so how would this differ from, I mean, I've seen regular like laser line scanners. What would be the advantages of, of this type of probe over, let's say, a, a, a regular, some other type of scanner? Maybe your competitors. <laughs> uh, correct. So our ability to pick up uh, shinier surfaces um, we have a feature called ESP3, which lets us dynamically change um, each point on that laser line that we're collecting. We can dynamically change the laser intensity of those points. So if you have a part oh, on, that on, has... On the fly, you mean? Correct. Okay. So a, as you're scanning the part, if you have embedded materials um, that are different colors than the original part, then the laser line can actually... Um, dynamically change the intensity so that it gets a good return back to the camera. So even as even if it, like this happens to be all one solid color, but you're saying if you had if you had a part that was different colors or different different Correct. reflectivities, as it yep. reached that so, new section, would just change. Yep. So okay. even a part assembly, if you have two mated parts together that were two different materials, we're able to scan those two parts um, without having to change the settings. So that adaptability on the fly is a benefit. Okay. And what, what about just the advantages of, of laser scanning in general? I mean, obviously, speed is one of them. We, we talked about that. But what do you get from, from laser scanning that you might not get from just simple uh, touch probing? Yeah, it's the amount of data that we collect. So we're collecting about 75,000 points per second. So if you can imagine, that would take you a very long time to collect that with a touch probe. So uh, one of the benefits of that is to be able to cover the part in XYZ points, and we're able to get a 3D color map of that deviation of the part. So uh, 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 what you call a contour map, right? Correct. Uh, is that something you can bring up on the screen by any yes, chance? Yes, we okay. can. Okay. Uh, do we want to do that now or later? Or? Uh, later. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll get a shot of that later. Um, so we've talked about uh, kind of the speed of throughput, um, <clears throat> kind of the advantage of the contour map. Uh, anything else that, that this kind of technology buys the, the, the user that they wouldn't get over uh, a standard, let's say, a touch probe machine? Co cost about the same? Uh, the cost is a little bit more. Um, but they're making up through it for, through throughput, uh, uh, obviously. I mean, you're getting much correct. higher throughput. Okay. Correct. So if, if you're taking into account the additional cost, but time savings could be 50%, um, okay. you know, then that's a very quick return on investment. So we have a lot of customers that we do benchmarks for, and they see that potential savings and end up purchasing laser scanners. Okay, David, so, so earlier you were talking to us about uh, kind of the advantages of scanning is the idea of collecting a point cloud, being able to uh, create a, a, a contour plot, a colored contour plot. 
Uh, so now we're going to, we've moved over to another station so we actually have a monitor yes. we can look at. We're going to take a look at a contour plot. Why don't you tell us what we're seeing? Uh, what you're seeing here up on the contour plot is the color deviations. Uh, so the color represents how far those data points that we've collected are from the nominal CAD model. So you can see the high spots on the top left corner are red. So we're reaching up towards two millimeters above the CAD model and the blue areas are going to be you know, lower than the CAD model. So what we can do with those points are take uh, measurements. So for instance, we can select on those data points and take discrete points and it will tell us how far exactly in that area we are away from the CAD model. So, so the, what, what's being marked off right now in the flyouts is that point, the distance from what the Correct. CAD model is expecting, right? Yep, that okay. exact XYZ data point and how far it is away from the CAD model. Okay. What we can also do is uh, take that data and extract features from it. So some of these features on there, such as the slots and the circles, we can then use that data to extract those features out. These are the actual measurements Correct. of that yep. part. Okay. And you can do uh, GD&T with that, true position, uh, take diameters, um, radiuses, and um, the li limitless possibilities. So much much more greater wealth of information than you'd get with a simple a simple touch probe, which might give you some, some basic features, whether you're in tolerance, but with a contour map, uh, millions of points, correct. you're really seeing the entire object and, and know everything about it you need to know. And that is correct. And also we can go back to the data if we need to and um, bring it back up and take some measurements that we may not have taken uh, previously. Okay. So the, the, the scanner that we're looking at, kind of the advantages are speed of throughput, yep. uh, much, more, much more data, uh, about the same accuracy as, as a touch probe. Uh, and just a much more wealth of data that you can look at uh, compared to CAD and really uh, understand what you're, uh, understand the, the quality of the part that you're measuring. Yep, and that is correct. Okay, well David, appreciate it. Thanks for showing us. Uh, Thank you. Uh, what was the name of the probe again? Uh, XC65DX. XC65DS, okay. Thanks, back to you Mike. And thanks to Nikon for allowing us to come into the booth and take a look at their cross scanner XC65DX. DX, that was okay. it. Well, That's uh, right, from Nikon. Thank you.